And welcome. This is News of Interest with John Ubel. Please be sure to visit my website at suncoastnews.net. That's suncoastnews.net. And in some recent news, in international news, there's been some, some food riots overseas, especially in Tunisia and Algeria. And in Tunisia, it ended up resulting and the president and several other high-ranking officials there fleeing the country. Now, the president there was basically a dictator, and he had ruled the country for about 23 years with a very autocratic type of iron-fisted rule, very much a strong man. And he retained power, you know, over the last two-something decades, but because of rising food prices and other economic issues in the country, there was this huge populist revolt, and the president realized that if he didn't leave the country that he would probably be killed along with his family. So he fled to Saudi Arabia, and they took him in. Now, the consequences of this is that it's very possible that we could see this type of populist type of, of revolt in Egypt and Saudi Arabia and some other countries throughout the Middle East and perhaps some third world and other, third world and, and other developing countries uh, around the world. Because what's happening here is that for a lot of people in those lower tier countries, the price of food is, is becoming more than 50 or 60 percent of their total annual pay. And if it keeps going up as it's expected to because of the global economic crash, then people are going to even have less money available, and it'll get to the point where it consumes 80 to 90% of their income and then to the point where it, it consumes 100%. And then it gets to the point where then they really have to start cutting back on the amount of food that they eat. And when people start going hungry, as I said several weeks ago, they start becoming quite militant and... That's one type of pain that, that people really just can't deal with is hunger pain. They they become very unruly and revolutionary and militant and all kinds of other other stuff that uh, ends up setting political change in, into motion. So that's something definitely to watch out for, especially here in the United States because of the food prices that, that seem to keep going up with no end in sight. So I'm going to have this story linked on my uh, YouTube channel, and it's actually on the Intel Hub's website. But there is, on this actual page, there's two really good YouTube videos which are embedded in this story about the, um, the civil unrest that's been happening in Tunisia, and it seems that there's gun battles taking place in the capital and other large cities throughout the country. So... It's unlikely that they're going to be able to clamp down on the unrest anytime soon because the people there feel cheated and and they want to uh, get what they feel is, is rightfully theirs. So what I'm going to do is take a short break and then I'm going to come back and then I'm going to finish out the news. And I'm back. Now this next story is titled, Without a DPS May Close Half of Its Schools. The story is about the Detroit public school system. I'm going to read a short little snippet here from the story. It says, Detroit public schools would close nearly half of its schools within the next two years and increase high school class sizes to 62 by the following year under a deficit reduction plan filed with the state. The plan, part of a monthly update emergency financial manager, Robert Bob, gives the Department of Education was filed late Monday to provide insight into Bob's progress in his attempt to slash $327 million from the deficit in the district to zero over the next several years. Under it, the district would slim down from 142 schools now to 72 during the 2012-2013 school year. And then the article goes on. Now, basically, this is not new news because I remember a few months ago the Detroit public school system had released several announcements saying that they were going to have to cut back dramatically on the, on the amount of schools that they had because 
their revenues are dropping more quickly than what their expenses are. And the Detroit public school system is certainly not alone in this because nearly every school district in the county, nearly nearly every school district in the state, as well as the United States, as well as the different counties throughout the country, nearly all of them are facing budget shortfalls. And this is something which is going to continue for the foreseeable future because the tax base in these different districts keeps shrinking. And these these different municipalities, different counties, different states, they're dependent um, on a large part from property tax revenue, from sales tax revenue, and uh, also from state state income tax and local income tax revenue. And all of those streams of income keep shrinking, and they're going to keep shrinking because the economy is going to continue to contract. So if you think that you're in an area that's safe, from these types of cutbacks, you really should think again because I'm seeing them pretty much everywhere and even in my own state. Now, about a year or so ago, maybe it was a year and a half ago, there was a situation in my own county of Pasco where they were going to cut something like 300 teacher jobs. And I believe that there was maybe 3,500, maybe 4,000 teachers in the county. And... Uh, that may include staff. I can't remember the exact numbers. But anyways, they were going to cut 300 teaching positions. And the teachers with the union, they they were they didn't go on strike, but, but there was a lot of demonstrations against it. And surprisingly, the county was able to get around that. But I firmly believe that somehow the federal government gave money through the back door in a covert way, which allowed the county to, to retain those jobs and those positions. So it's just some one more thing to, to pay attention to because, as I've said, there's really no place in the country that's going to be insulated from these budget cuts and these layoffs. They're just going to continue. And then our next story, I actually won't want to uh, go ahead and read this whole article. It's actually short. It's less than a page. And the title of it is Electricity Costs Customers More in Florida. And this, this basically concerns people on the Suncoast portion of the state, the greater Tampa Bay area, because those are the people that have Progress Energy. And the story begins with, customers of Progress Energy Florida pay more than the customers of its new parent company, North Carolina-based Duke Energy, and the difference is sizable. According to a story in the St. Petersburg Times, puzzled by the price of power, Progress Energy Florida customers pay $119 per 1,000 kilowatt hours of power. Progress Energy North Carolina customers pay $102 per 1,000 kilowatts of hour, kilowatt hours of power. And Duke Energy in North Carolina customers pay $92 per 1,000 kilowatt hours of power. Why are Floridians so cursed? Because they live in Florida, apparently. The fact that Duke and Progress Energy are merging doesn't mean Progress Energy Florida customers will see their bills go down. The time story points out that utility rates are calculated based on all kinds of variables from fuel costs and regulatory fees to energy efficiency programs and a healthy dose of politics. The main reason customers won't see a decrease in their bills after the merger of Duke and Progress is because the utility plans to apply for higher fees that would go into effect January 1, 2013. Times reporter Ivan Penn points out that in most states, North Carolina included, utilities can't make customers pay pre-construction costs for proposed nuclear plants. In Florida, they can. So I was going to read the whole article, but I'm going to kind of just skip down here. Basically, what this amounts to is that Progress Energy customers are paying $5.53 per 1,000 kilowatt hours for the cost of constructing this nuclear power plant up in Levy County, which is pretty much at the heart of the Nature Coast. And because the reason that I, that I mention this story is because I hear so many people complain about their electric bills and they're wondering why they are as high as they are. And this story actually lays out part of the reason. The other, the other reason is because the price of oil keeps going up. But it's something that people have to pay attention to because it's reflected in their, it's reflected directly in, in their, in their energy usage and the, in what they're, what they're built for it. So I'm going to have this story also linked 
on my uh, on my YouTube channel info box, so you'll be able to read this in full uh, from there as well. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and conclude the show, and please visit my YouTube channel when you get a chance at suncoastnews.net. You can also go to youtube.com slash johnu78. Thanks for listening and take care.